Good Tuesday morning, everybody, live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. The last day of July has arrived, and with it, some temperatures that are very atypical for this time of the year. Not that anybody's arguing. It's definitely not going to be a heat wave, and it's not going to be anything in the way of an Arctic blast, but whenever you can kind of stair-step the temperatures down by just a little bit, it's going to look a lot better out there if you have any outdoor plans. Now, there is still that possibility of some thunderstorms out across the Mid-South, so definitely going to have to pay attention to that. We'll keep an eye on that forecast coming up here in just a little bit. If you've never been here before, welcome to our video weather blog called Weather Overtime. Again, if you haven't been tuned in before and you can't stick around for the whole thing, we go about 10 to 15 minutes talking to you about what's going on with weather. If you have any questions, drop them into the comments section. And of course, if you can't stick around for the whole thing, forecast in the red bar down there at the bottom of the screen. And if you can't catch up with that, if you want to check out something else, go to this website, wreg.com, where you can catch our seven-day forecast and a whole bunch of other information, including details about burn bans across the Mid-South and wildfire danger. We'll take a look at the National Hurricane Center forecast coming up here in just a little bit, as well as a whole bunch of other information, so stick around for more there. Drop your location into the comments section. Let's see where you're from and also what's going on with the weather in your area. If you got temperatures, wind speeds, uh, for those of you who got showers overnight, let's see some rain gauge information. Let's do some amateur meteorology here for this morning and let us know a little bit more about where you're checking in from. And of course, if you have any weather pictures, we'd love to show them. We didn't get quite too many of them overnight, so we'd love to be able to see more about what it looks like out there from your vantage point. So make certain that you please send that along to us. Again, you can tweet them to me at aonic underscore WREG3, or you can email them to me at austin.onic at WREG.com. Dustin Brumfield, partly cloudy, 72 from Smithfield, Smithville, Mississippi. Thank you very much uh, for that one. Everybody else checking in from around the Mid-South area so far this morning. Appreciate everybody uh, keeping an eye on the, what's going on there. Countdown until autumn, 53 days and change. Granted, that doesn't sound like too much, but we are working our way toward that halfway point right between the seasons. And again, right as we go into around September 22nd, that's the point as we go from summer into winter where we transfer over. Now, this doesn't mean that it's going to be that much cooler but it does mean at least we're making progress toward that. It gives you kind of a target date for those of you out there who are not really enjoying the summer temperatures out there, although today is going to be a lot less summery from what we usually see. Sunrise this morning at 6.09. Sunrise tomorrow morning at 6.09. We're slowly losing daylight over the next couple of days as we see again some fairly cloudy conditions today but more sunshine into the next few days. If you'd like to catch up with more Almanac data, please follow us on Twitter or at WREG.com slash weather. Speaking of which, here's what it looks like for the rest of the mid-morning into the rest of the area. Temperatures again back into the lower to mid 80s today. Again, we should be for this time of the year, the last day of July should be again into and around uh, the area close to about the lower to mid 90s, well below that for today, so no major problem seen with the temperatures today. Mickey Utley, welcome from uh, South Dakota. Looks like that's the uh, farthest away viewer for right now. Thank you very much uh, for checking in uh, at this point in time. Everybody else, welcome to the show. Cloudy, cool day in Bolivar, 74. Burt Bishop, thank you very much for that weather report. Cloudy in Olive Branch, Sheila Moore, thank you very much. Wendy Black, over the heat, kids need to go outside. I was always told it builds character when my parents shoved me out the door. So that's, uh, again, hopefully they get used to that before too long. Thanks for checking on through for right now. Welcome to everybody else who's checking in. Again, drop your location and your weather reports into the comments section, and we'll read those off throughout the rest of the morning. Currently, a few joggers and strollers out at the track and field facility around Oxford, Mississippi. And looking back toward Ventress Hall, temperatures back in the lower 70s with calm winds and some pretty high humidity. Looking back toward the Grove and the Student Union on the Ole Miss campus for this morning. Olive Branch, Mississippi, former mayor, current meteorologist Sam Reichard. Nice view of some clouds mixed in with some of that sunshine uh, into and around the area there. Joyce Yonk Dale Doolin. Uh, from Maryland. Cloudy here. Okay, thank you very much uh, for checking in from over around the Delmarva Peninsula and say hello to uh, meteorologist Dan Satterfield over there. Very nice guy on the air in those locations. Around the area of Rhodes College in Memphis, more clouds. 
A little bit more sunshine earlier peeking on through here, looking back to the northwest on the Weather Underground camera. And again, thanking former Mayor uh, Sam Reichert for that view from Olive Branch we just saw. Airport, again, a little on the hazy side, kind of cloudy. The warmer air escorting in a lot more moisture, so we have some fog and we have some haze out there. Not enough to slow down the airplanes or any travel around the area of Memphis International. Green icon indicates delays of 15 minutes or less, so looking good there. And also across the continental U.S., no delays at this point in time. More information again from the Federal Aviation Administration from their Air Traffic Control System Command Center if you'd like to see more there. Nothing showing up in Shelby County just about 10 minutes after 8 o'clock. We do have a few sprinkles showing up. Some in northeast Arkansas, those have dwindled and a little bit more activity into and around portions of northwest Mississippi. And that's about as much as we have. Excuse me, again, we're having some problems with the tracking system getting a little cranky here for right now. Most of what we're looking at at this point in time is showing again uh, the possibility of more of these light scattered showers taking place, developing, drifting, falling apart, starting back over again. But early this morning, that's about all that we have going on right now. Now, a little further back to the southwest, we have even more activity just south of Carthage down toward the Louisiana state line. All of this moving back to the east. So this could be a problem for I-55, Jackson back up to around Batesville, Clarksdale, southeast Arkansas within the next couple of hours. But so far on Storm Tracker 3S radar, we have really little, if anything, showing up directly here in the Mid-South area. So we'll be watching that, what goes on here. A few showers up around Paducah, back to Poplar Bluff, north of the area. But again, beyond that, things are relatively quiet. Adele bon Bonnewell, hope I'm saying that right, clouds in Lexington. Thank you very much uh, for that one. Nice in St. Robert, Missouri. Karina Patterson, thank you very much uh, for checking in there. Ashland, Mississippi, cloudy. Elise Boyce, 70 degrees. Thank you very much for that one. Rodney Jones, I-20 westbound, east of Boga, Alabama. I've never been there before. I have to check that out. 80 degrees, partly cloudy. Thank you very much. Uh, Laura Detter from Batesville, Mississippi, 72 and mostly cloudy. Thank you very much. Thanks to everybody for the reports. Well, getting a lot of them coming in here uh, at this point in time. My friend Vince Tetwan from up around uh, Kansas, fellow Topeka West graduate. Welcome to the show. Thanks for stopping on by. And temperatures in the Mid-South right now, live real-time information showing lower to mid-70s out across the area. Again, those clouds doing a good job of filtering out a good portion of all that heat, so it's not quite as sticky and steamy as it usually is at this time of the morning. Rest of the morning, again, isolated chances of showers and thunderstorms coming on through. Light northwesterly wind that might do just enough to dip the temperatures again into the mid to lower 80s throughout the rest of the day. Better chances of showers and thunderstorms the farther we go through this afternoon and into this evening, but doesn't look like anything really huge. Uh, doesn't look like anything severe at this time either. We'll take a look at the severe threat coming up in just a little bit with an update from the Storm Prediction Center. Now the chances of showers and thunderstorms, again, are gonna be scattered. So if you have plans for outdoors, Go ahead and keep them, but just remember to get back indoors once again. If you see lightning or hear thunder, it's time to wrap things up and get back indoors once again just to be on the safe side. Chances of showers and thunderstorms remain through News Channel 3 at 10, possibly into early Wednesday morning, and then by daybreak tomorrow, drive time on midweek Wednesday. Doesn't look like much going on, but if you're heading east toward Nashville, southeast down toward Huntsville, you may pick up again some more scattered showers, anything going on down into that area for right now. Severe weather threat again remains for northeast Mississippi. It's a marginal threat, and it's just outside the News Channel 3 County. So from Oxford back over to Corinth, that's the main thing down to the southeast of there. Marginal threat is not great. In the pale green area, we're seeing that threat for possible thunderstorms, but just only thunderstorms, not a huge severe weather threat. So definitely some good news on that. Rest of the day today, again, very nice. Temperatures well below normal, and those chances of showers and thunderstorms remain across the area. Now, we are going to keep a slight chance of a shower or thunderstorm in the forecast for early Wednesday. Beyond that, plenty of sunshine and the temperatures head upwards from there. Lower 90s by Thursday, heading into the mid 90s by the time we work our way into the first full week of August. And the first weekend of August, that's where we see more chances of showers and thunderstorms. Again, not great chances, but still something you want to pay attention to if you have any outdoor plans. So keep it tuned to News Channel 3. Yesterday, 
computer models were showing a distinct downwards trend in the numbers. Now that appears to have reversed and is now going back upwards again to where we may see mid to upper 90s coming our way as we get into the later part of next week. Now this again, just the air temperatures, combine that with all that nice humidity across the area and we could be talking about heat index temperatures near or over heat advisory territory, which is 105 degrees or over. So it could be some more hot weather coming our direction into the course of the next couple of days toward the first portion of the first week of August. But again, the first few days of August, not doing too bad across much of the area. Now, good news again for here in the Mid-South area. You've followed CBS News and our uh, newscast throughout the evening, overnight into yesterday. You know that there is, again, a pretty serious wildfire risk out across much of California, especially in the northern part of the state and throughout much of the Intermountain West. So some oppressive firefighting conditions going on here. Question always raised, what's the wildfire danger like here in the Mid-South comparatively? Not much going on at this time. No burn bans are in effect. Lee County in Arkansas was under a burn ban up until a couple of days ago and has now been released from that. Five counties in southwest Arkansas remain under burn bans. Hempstead County was removed from the burn ban list yesterday, so just five counties instead of six for right now. And again, wildfire danger rated as low to moderate through here. So if you're planning on going for a camp out anywhere in Arkansas, Check with the local fire department, see if you can actually have a campfire or not, because that could be very dangerous and could spark off an even bigger possibility of a problem. So please keep that in mind, and please keep it safe out there no matter where you go with anything involving fire or flame. Mississippi, according to the Mississippi Forestry Division, no burn bans in effect. Tennessee does not really issue burn bans unless it's on a great need, severe drought situation, and nothing in effect for the Mid-South, so good news on there. Going from the the opposite from drought to too much rainfall and very dangerous weather. We don't see anything developing in the tropics right now. Gulf, Caribbean, Western Atlantic is quiet. And according to the National Hurricane Center, their forecasts are showing the next two to five days as quiet without anything really developing. This right here is where we will see the development mainly for the possibility of tropical storms into August. But as we go from August into September, we start to see more storms developing out into the Atlantic. So it's going to get a lot more active possibly in the next few weeks. Keep it tuned to News Channel 3. Even though it's quiet right now, that doesn't mean it's going to stay that way. So again, keep it tuned to News Channel 3, again, for more information on that. My complete forecast is available with Bob and Josh on Talkback Live, and that's on the air right now on AM 730 here in the Memphis metro area. If you can't catch your, their signal because you're from out of town, please make certain you join them online for some great sports chat, tons of things to talk about with football season coming up, and of course a lot going on with the Tigers basketball teams. They talk a lot about that, golf, bowling, everything you want to talk about, again, on TalkBack Live. More on TalkBackLiveNetwork.org if you're from out of town and want to tune in for more on that. Coming up at about Roughly 10.40 this morning, again, depending on when we get done taping the updates here in the studio. Join me for our second weather update of the morning, where we'll take a look at weather where the troops are and see what's going on with friends or loved ones that you may have serving in the United States military. That'll be on my Facebook page, Periscope, and Twitter, coming up just before 11 o'clock later on this morning. That'll wrap it up for this edition, the early edition of News Channel 3's exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime. Things you want to see on here, more climate, more satellite pictures, whatever it is you want to see, please email me again at austin.onic at wrhe.com. And thanks to everybody who's checking in for this morning to see what's going on in and around the area. Appreciate all the weather reports, all the waves, hello, and everything else out there. And thanks to everyone again for checking in and watching us here on our News Channel 3 Facebook page. More updates throughout the rest of the morning on air and online, so keep it tuned for more with News Channel 3.